Welcome back, Zero K fans. Floris is not yet ready. They apparently just woke up. Yeah, okay, good to know. Regardless, <laughs> you just woke up. I've been awake for almost 24 hours. Anyway, no, actually, like more like 18. Not that bad. I digress. We're going to be moving on to Sprung vs. Silent Shadow. First game, once again, an Isis Delta, as with every round two game. So, Sprung is replacing the sponge. No surprises there. I mean, that's who was playing Silent Shadow. So, yeah, Sprung replacing S the sponge. Pretty good replacement, I think. It's, I think. Not totally sure. I'm not sure their LO is offhand. But we'll see how that works out. Whoever wins that fights Kulon in the semifinals. And then Orphelius right now is 1 1 against Icons. They've been reporting the score after every game, which is kind of nice of them. And Old Ghost Rocker and Mr. Moon remain unseen. Nowhere to be found. Probably both of them are just going to be disqualified, and then Orpheus is going to move on to fight Lowry. Oh well, happens. Happens every tournament. So, we are moving on to game one between Sprung and Silent Shadow. And we are going to be hopefully seeing something very interesting. I mean, it's Isis Delta. It's going to be at least somewhat interesting. That's always an odd map, but it... It's a thing. It exists. Stuff happens on it. Sometimes aquatic stuff. Sometimes aerial stuff. Sometimes I forget to turn off that stupid economy bar thing that really just should... Uh, I should find a way of turning it off permanently. And Sprung actually going for underwater. Last time we saw Klon go for an air start and Kloki from Bakiv Danta. And this time we see Sprung inside the shadow. Sprung going for water. And Sprung actually is pretty good at LO. So they're a decent replacement for the sponge. I think the sponge is near 2,000 or so. Actually, it's going to be a more even matchup than the sponge versus Silent the shadow would have been. Sprung going for Amphib. Silent the shadow going for Amphib as well. Okay, double Amphib. Slightly unusual, but then again, this map is actually not that well explored. Sprung... So Silent the Shadow going for early ducks. Sprung going for duck into conch. Duck into conch, no big surprises there. Very safe opening. Both players going for the mid game. Neither player trying to do any real cheese. Neither player trying to do anything too fancy or tricky. Just going for fairly basic, fairly straightforward directness. Silent the Shadow, however, not focusing on the water as much as Sprung is. No surprise given that Sprung's side of the map is much more aquatic than the land side. And yes, Skazi. Go ask Anner, kid. I don't understand what the motivation was for making this on Isis Delta of all maps. I really don't understand. It's, I mean, it is pretty. And it's a neat training map that is used for the tour, the main tutorial right now. No one going for this obelisk this time, though. The obelisks were, they were reclaimed by Clone like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> okay, this map, when it's game one map, is actually fine. I mean... Okay, it's weird, it's a bit different, but honestly, as a game one map, when you consider that after this map, there's still another match, and possibly two other matches, it's not the biggest deal. I mean, I'd say more so if it was a best of three rather than, sorry, best of five, like first of three rather than first of two, best of three. Best of three is a little bit trickier because you know, the first person who wins would have that, that advantage where they only need to win one more time, whereas best of five, it's one win out of three. So yeah, it's a win on a map that they might be favored by due to the position advantage, or it might play into their hand a bit better. I'm not sure which side is actually better if either side is actually objectively better, but most likely one side's going to favor a player more than the other, just given their style. At any rate, it is one match of a set, and it's not a deciding match. It isn't a match that actually chooses who wins or loses. So it's weird, but it's probably not going to be totally breaking the tournament completely. I, I seriously doubt it's going to cause too many upsets. It's one of those things that's more you know, an even skill it might cause based on position advantage. A player to win whether it would have lost or vice versa, but given that's one match out of a set, I could see it. I still think that it's more suitable for a best of five than a best of three. That is more suitable for the finals than for any of the intermediate matches. And as this is the quarterfinals, it's a bit harder to really justify. However, it doesn't matter. Actually, I should probably point that out here, too. It's actually round two. I'll put quarterfinals. There we go.
So this is yeah, the quarterfinals Sprung and Silent Shadow game one. And Silent Shadow going around the corner, trying to avoid Sprung's forces. Now Sprung is in the water, so a little bit harder to assault, especially as this cliff is right in the way. Silent Shadow, on the other hand, fairly open. They have assault positions on all sides. It really is much harder to actually get around, whereas Sprung basically has this. That's their vulnerable position. They have a bit over here if stuff gets... It can hit the Metal Extractor, it can hit the Lotus. Can't really hit the Factory. And the Ducks are outnumbered and way in enemy torture. I think Silence had to assume that Sprung had started over in the northeast corner, as that is the typical place to start on Isis Delta. And that is a very, very typical thing to do. I'm not at all surprised that that was the choice. Oh yeah, Splash Damage is dealt by Duck Weapons. That has been confirmed. In ca I wasn't totally sure. I was fairly certain they did, and I was right. They did. Unlike Panthers, which do not. As was pointed out earlier, but Ducks do. So, with Northwest Corner, we do have the Conch coming in here. Silent Shadow building up pretty quickly. Sprung, on the other hand, getting this very juicy southwest or southeast side, 1.8, 1.51. Considering that the rest of the map is mostly 1.27 and 1 pretty much flat, that's a good thing to get. So, Sprung has a nice defensible safe position. Silent Shadow expanding a bit more aggressively is a bit of a riskier setup. I mean, taking these two metal strategies over here. And they're fairly valuable ones. And this one over here is safe. Absolutely safe. It is completely boxed in. There's no way to get to that without winning the game outright, pretty much. Hasn't been taken. These ones over the southwest are being taken, and at the same time, Silent Shadow shifting over with. They are going. No, they're going pretty heavily with ducks. They're going still the ducks. Sprung going over to scallops, though. One scallop has been built so far. I don't really like scallops. I don't know. I just like their animations. Just looking at them walk. That was kind of cool. I don't know, there's something about the way the scallops are laid out. It's They're kind of creepy, but at the same time, kind of cool looking. Anyway, that's the scallop. Ducks, on the other hand, are much more typical. They're also much more self-harming. This many ducks should be able to deal with the scallop, no problem. Actually, they should be able to get rid of the commander. Sprung's commander... I don't know if Sprung is behind economically. They're going to lose quite a lot to the loss of their commander. At the same time, Ducks coming in over in Silent Shadow's base, getting forced to retreat, surprisingly enough, despite their numbers, and Sprung's commander about to go down, and down goes with that. Silent Shadow looks like they're trying to get a wave before that happens. Lost all their Ducks, though. One, that last one almost got away. Died due to the hill, however, it fell to its death. And Sprung going on the offensive once again, trying to win base race. Because at this point, they are behind economically, but they aren't attacking the Northwest. They're not aware of the Northwest, actually. Sprung has no idea that there is anything to the Northwest. Regardless, they're actually in a nice position to go for base trade. But they aren't going to go for it. I mean, it's kind of a risky thing to do. Unfortunately, the problem is they are going towards these Lotuses, which are not so much risky as they are guaranteed death. It's not an uncertainty, and with that, Sprung loses all of their ducks. They are, however, getting some scalps over to the Southwest, but that has no follow-up. There was another scalp. Yeah, there's the other scalp being built. And the third one... Where's the third one? One scalp here, one scalp here, and one up to the north. No ducks for... Okay, well, there are actually ducks for them, but... Where are the ducks specifically for sprung? Not very many! And scalp getting rid of another metal extractor. Silent Shadow has expanded rapidly. Taking the north side, taking the south side, taking this entire side of the map, the entire west side of the map. I mean, Silent Shadow has been expanding the way you really expand in this game. Sprung, on the other hand, being far safer, they're expanding primarily with their commander, which is now dead and becoming Silent Shadow food. Not expanding to the north very much. They have started to, but not very much. I think they're expecting air. Given the amount of defenders they're building, I'm thinking they're thinking that Silent Shadow has gone for an air switch. And yes, it is seven minutes in. This is about the time an air switch would start to happen. But at the same time, Silent Shadow... They saw their base. Silent Shadow really hadn't much built up yet. But yeah, Nerys, which is totally plausible. It could happen. And Silent Shadow's commander trying to put itself on a hill, which is not going to work. Yeah, so both players lost their commanders, but Silent Shadow was still way ahead in terms of economy. They still had a lot more in the way of constructors that were building up. In fact, what constructors are there right now? There are... Where are the constructors? There's one over here. So at this point, it's about... So four or so for Silent Shadow, and it looks like two for Sprung, which... No, three for Sprung. There's a few more not accounted for. 
Looks fairly even though. Sprung is definitely now shifting over more to building with constructors, but they hadn't expanded as much as they could have. They also are going to run into the plus 20 hump. They are accessing at plus 14, let alone a plus 20. And Archer's coming in to help get rid of the scallops. They are the unit of choice for doing that. Definitely the right option. And Ducks nicely kiting to help get rid of the scallops too. Scallops really need to get in range in order for them to work. And the boys as well, just on top of the archers in case the archers were not enough. That will get rid of those scallops. Yet another scallop goes down. How many scallops are there though? Three scallops, all of which belong to Sprung, all of which are out of position. None of which are really where they need to be. This force here from Silent Shadow, looks like Silent Shadow really just wants to go for the death blow. I do see them taking it. They have a good unit mix. The archers will be able to help get rid of the ducks. The boys will help get rid of, it'll be general fire support. Get rid of the scallops and such though. They are out of position. Yeah, there's actually no boys that are in the main force, but the duck's going down. This scallop will not be a threat. There are just too many units. It's going to go down in a second or two. Yeah, there it goes. And with that, Sprung runs out of army. That's it. That's, that's Sprung's army. It's gone. It's absolutely gone. That is... That's going to be a problem. So there we go. Sprung has lost to Silent Shadow Game 1. And guess that map choice. So we're going to see if Floris has gotten ready yet... I'm thinking that I'm not going to have Floris available up until about the semifinals. Given the way the matches are going, I'm thinking semifinals because I'm pretty sure Ophelius is going to be just heading straight to semifinals. Old Ghost Doc and Mr. Moon both being absent up to this point. Yeah, I don't see anything for them. Okay, actually Floris is here. So I will get that set up. Stay tuned. We'll have that in just a moment. Co-commentary! Hooray! Probably. And we're going to be moving on to Red Comet, by the way. Oh, okay, apparently Floris is actually being subbed in. Not sure where, I guess, as Orphelius' opponent for round two. A little bit odd. All right, never mind. Flores is going to be helping me out, so be back in just a moment with co-commentary. Welcome back, Zero K fans. Sorry about that delay. Flores is here now. Oh hi! Yeah, there you go. Hi, Zero K fans. So yeah, Flores is here. Yeah. We are all here. Let us go. Oh, Gribby. Silent Shadow this versus game, Sprung. Sorry, there's a chat message. Gribby, this game is, if you've ever played Total Annihilation or Supreme Commander, or Planetary Annihilation, though that's the least related, it's very much like that, except a bit smaller scale, more like Command and Conquer. Imagine if you took Supreme Commander and Command and Conquer and mashed them together. This is what you get. You would get 0k. And if you keep watching, you will see a game. Because that yeah, exactly. is what we are doing. We are not simply looking at a web page, a challenge page, showing results. We are actually also incidentally on Sprung vs. Sign of the Shadow Game 2 on Red Comet, but we are not simply looking at a random web page. We are actually watching a 3D real strategy game. I'm sorry if that sounds too condescending. I'm being a little bit sarcastic. But we are going to start. The game is beginning, and Flores, like I said, is with me. Flores, very experienced player. Basically, great person for knowledge. Very good reference. Yeah, I'll try to do my best uh, to uh, provide this game with uh, two-year-old, year-old, out-of-date uh, zero-k knowledge. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, but it's more a matter of general experience and yeah, ideas. It, it works just fine, and especially on this map. Not much has changed. No, although I do. Well, Orphelius and I have mostly Orphelius has been working on. We've been working on a improvement, mostly just minor things like specularity and such. Like just tiny little improvements to make it a bit prettier, a bit shinier. Ah, uh, the map you mean? Yeah. You're, but this is uh, the classic version now, right? This is the classic this version. Is Our version hasn't it. been uploaded yet. It will be once it's... I'm looking polished. forward to that. This map is uh, as old as Total Annihilation, uh, I think. It is? I thought it was... I thought Comet Catcher was the Total Annihilation map that this was just chopped down from. 
Yeah, it must have been one of the first ports or adjustments. One of the first spring maps. Yeah, and it shows it. What's really annoying is you see the center where it, like, these weird sort of square pit just built around yeah. it. Yeah, I actually edited that out in the other in the Polish version. <laughs> There's a hole in I the map. That. <laughs> well, the hole in the map in the north and south, I don't mind. I think that actually adds a bit of character. But that weird square bit just looks too mechanical. It looks too artificial. It, it needed to go. Anyway, game has started. Sprung. Vehicles. Sprung was down 0 1, lost the first game. Light vehicles. Sound Shadow going for light vehicles. Totally typical. This map, that's what we have when we have light vehicles. So, for the sake of Greeby, we do actually have the way the game works. You start out with a factory. There's 11 factories. There's also a Strider Hub, which is a late game thing. But there's 11 factories, all of which can be built for free at the start. One factory can be built for free at the start. It's like a faction choice almost. And mostly they're separated based on mobility type. So, whether they're vehicles, bots, whether they can go underwater, whether they can hover over water, whether they can fly, that sort of thing. And combinations thereof as well, like hovering vehicles or underwater bots. Well, bots that can go underwater. So that's that's how it starts out. And then after that, it's basically you have you control the map for metal, which in this case, every single metal spot is 2.28 metal. That's typical. Two plus two is pretty typical. Everything's based on income and spending rates rather than focusing too much on stored resources in most RTS games. It's entirely how much you gain from metal spots and power generators, like this solar plant will be wind generators as well, and fusion generators later on, and what you spend in factories and with commanders and constructors as they build your base. Well, I realize more like build an outpost effectively for fighting from. It's very unit-based. That's what it is. Although there are a lot of <coughs> turrets as well. Maybe oh, it's yeah. uh, lots and lots of turrets. It's it's almost a tower <laughs> defense game in a way. No, 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 no. That's that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's it. well. Okay. To be fair, there are a lot of turrets. That is actually a very large segment of the build menu. But frankly, there's only like two or three that are used. These three here, the defender, the lotus, and the stardust are what's used. Stardust is for large numbers of units. Lotus is kind of an opening cheap thing for a couple units that might attack. And defender is great for one or two. Weak raiders just to kill them outright. Okay. Yeah, zero K quick tutorial. I'm gonna have to do a lot of this once the Steam release happens. I actually, I do. Uh, have... Here's a good thing. You see the attack with three scorches on that commander. Oh yeah, nice scorcher die. The commander is uh, relatively weak in combat. Well, it's got a shotgun. He just he, he just uh, upgraded it, and now it has a shotgun instead of his uh, commander laser. Yeah. Uh, which with which he could have taken on those three scorches. Yeah, so uh, one thing to point out... the Scorch is... He's smart. He sees the commander and he just moves to the other side of yeah, uh, this is his territory where there's a free uh, constructor to kill. Actually, two free Scorchers as well. One thing to point out, Scorchers actually do deal damage. They uh, deal higher damage when they're closer. It's only Scorchers that do this. There's a lot of things like that in 0k where it's unique unit mechanics like well, that. Well, Dante has the same mechanic. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah. Well, Heat Ray is the, it's the weapon Heat Ray, but Scorchers are the only mainline unit that has that. Anyway, that does allow for three scorches to kill a commander, but commanders have sh this one, they can upgrade. This one upgraded to have a shotgun, which deals a lot of damage, splash damage primarily. It's, well, it's a cone of damage in front of it, and it would just shred these in two or three seconds. They would be all dead. It wouldn't work. Yeah, you, make, you can see uh, Silent Shadow putting down a uh, rate Ooh, Stardust a turret. Yep. Stardust turret, which is an anti-swarm unit uh, turret, which kills lots of uh, smaller units. And I think he's uh, that's a good uh, good pick for a turret there. Yes. Given what is, Spring has. This is a wonderful read. I, this is exactly where you need a turret, because this turret, it's a bit of a short-range turret, though, but it is a riot turret, so it'll support that shotgun. It'll stop the Scorchers from getting in. Although, to be honest, Sprung is doing very nicely. Just plays the Scorch. Well, I was about to say that until no, Sprung Silent is not, Shadow not is Silent Shadow is taking advantage of the thinness of that line. It's a bit of a problem there. Let, let me say something here about what Sprung was doing. He selected all the Scorches, drew a line across the entire map, so he had one like big so. wall of Scorches. This is not correct. This is not no. uh, the problem a with good the way of playing. You should keep them thin. together because the Scorchers of Silent Shadow could have. Uh, just run through that line, pick out one or two with his three or four scorches. It's better to have them move as a group together, so if you have one group in the top and one group in the bottom, uh, sort of patrolling. Yeah, it's 
with that sort of tactic is great for fleas. It's okay for darts. Yeah. It's terrible for like scorches are just too expensive for that to be worthwhile. I made that was a total mistake on my part. That was a bad call. Uh, <laughs> but still, it, he's making another stardust here. Um, that's actually uh, that's not that's too many. Like, the stardust rather is too late. Like Sound Shadow had a great read on the south one, but the north one just did not come up at the right time. And actually, it was a really bad. He's, he's position not too. spending. He's not. He's just losing uh, track of what's happening. Yeah, they're getting distracted. There's no nano from both players. Actually, are if you would hitting ask him if what what he would do in a given situation, he would give you the right answer, but he cannot keep up with what's happening everywhere. Yeah, the problem is both players are running in the plus twenty hump. Neither player has built up a caretaker. Another thing for those of you who are new, who aren't familiar with this game, you can set up. Yeah, static defense is common in this game because it's it's kind of smaller scale in Spring Commander. The static defense range compared to the size of the map and how quickly units could move was considerably lower and artillery was also a bit cheaper. In this game artillery is a bit more expensive and just not as popular honestly. I think artillery is going to get more popular because of the meta of higher of more common defenses. So mm -hmm. it's that'll probably just be that's a meta game thing more than anything. But as I was uh, saying, for those of you not familiar with total annihilation style build mechanics, workers and in the case of 0k caretakers, although it's it was a unit from an earlier game from Total Annihilation, can be used to add build power and thus push more metal and energy into the factory in order to speed up production. Neither player have done this so far because they both lost track of it. And that's why I call it the plus 20 hump because that's usually happens around the plus 20 metal mark. You forget to do that because that's when you need to do it, otherwise you excess metal. <laughs> that's a lot of uh, detailed uh, I realize. Uh, information. <laughs> so that's, my, that's why I call it the plus 20 hump. It's okay. one of those things that it's your progression from a mid game player to a top player has part of that is if you can consistently break the plus 20 hump every game. If you're never being tripped up by it. That's when you become yeah, a great if you player. Can transition uh, okay. But yeah, we we can see a uh, Silent Shadow. He's trying to raid with his scorches. It's not really working. He has a smaller army um although this kind of is working. <laughs> I'm not sure what uh Sprung is doing well. Silent Shadow is doing very nice to micro. Did so much damage. Well, they were they just they killed. That was positioning. He just kept, chase, kept chasing them, and he hadn't any uh, lotuses uh, near expansions. Yeah, well, that's the thing because it was retreat micro. Like zero K. Remember, it's whoever yeah, retreats wins. Yeah, yeah. Even with Scorcher's well, he, damage, he had mechanic. more income. He had should have had more units. So that's the plus twenty hump. No, care there's the caretaker. <laughs> Finally, we see a caretaker being built by Sprung. Silent yeah, Shadow uh, has built a caretaker uh, already. His energy is uh, off as yeah. well. Silent Shadow does not have energy to actually maintain this, but that's that's fine. They can deal with that. They've, I mean, Sprung basically doesn't have any advantage from their economy so far. So Silent Shadow has the stronger economy, all things considered. Oh, he still has more constructors running around, but he's not producing more units than uh, nope. Silent Shadow at the point, this moment. No, I mean, the defenses can be built a bit more effectively, but even then, I gotta say, as far as this game is concerned, this particular match has actually had very few defenses. A few Stardusts here and there, a few Lotuses here and there, but nothing more than a handful. Surprising amount of Stardusts, though. That, that's unusual. Still, it is... And yeah, in Subcom... Oh, okay, the thing with Supreme Commander, units probably do block each other, but the thing is... There's a lot more space compared to the unit size on the map than there is in 0k. In 0k, the the spacing between the units is narrower. The so the, the way the units can actually interact with each other and block each other is more pronounced. It's also the units are bigger, yeah, and yeah. there's more movement to uh, to it. And bigger relative to their range. Exactly. I think it holds a good spot in between StarCraft and. Uh, Supreme Commander. Yeah, me too. That's one thing I've got to say. I love Supreme Commander. It's a great game. I've played quite a bit of it. But the one thing I never liked about it was that it felt like it falsely advertised the whole realistic physics thing. I mean, it, it's realistic, yes. But it never really mattered as much as, say, in Myth, for example, if you ever played that old game. And Zero no, K does I don't think it's really much. relevant to... Uh, it's not, to but I, that was something I was really looking forward to. And it didn't provide, and Zero K did. But that's just a side. But yeah, Supreme Commander is still a great game. Nothing wrong with it. Except, it's just it's more of a taste thing in my end. I, I really like, I really like the fact that I that there is a bit more micromanagement in this. Yeah, I see what you mean. Do good, good middle ground. Anyway, squeeing aside, Sprung is, Sprung is kind of behind. They're kind of pulling ahead, but at the same time, Silent Shadow 
they have a stronger energy economy now. They still have a stronger metal economy thanks to Reclaim. We're getting to the stage of the game where Reclaim is mattering more than anything. Although energy has been mattering more than anything. Both players have been energy blocked <laughs> this entire game. Thank goodness yeah, they have none of them have built any solars apart from their starting. Uh, no, no, there's a few solars. here and there, but still, that's only about 10. Sorry, about 5, I should say. Because that plus their command. No, no more than that. Sorry. Well, that's quite funny. Usually Sprung. Uh, and there goes Sprung's commander. Uh, the commander died there. Yeah, Sprung just lost their commander to a pretty nice dive. That will cost him. That's like half his uh, energy income or a third of it. That's so. a quarter of the energy income. That's the problem. That's the bottleneck. Like, the metal income it was nothing. That was an eighth of the metal income. Who cares? And at the same time, <coughs> Sprung coming in here this north, not going to take that lying down, but also not going to be able to break through. Silent Shadow, their units are better grouped, they have a better local advantage. They lost some of these northern... These border expansions were lost, but really... Nice repair, too. I'm glad to see this. We didn't see this in any of the earlier games. There wasn't enough repair going on, but we do see it going on here. Glad to see it. Still, Silent Shadow does have... They have to take advantage of the local advantage and the defender's advantage to get out of this. Sprung going along the south, avoiding the Scorchers, keeping them out of position. This is really good... This is a really good position game by Sprung, making sure just to make sure Silent Shadow does not have the local advantage that they really need. Getting rid of another metal extractor, getting rid of some of the workers. Caretaker being their biggest target though. One of the assisting workers is being hit. The factory will not go down in time though. No. It's gonna if be he does down. one big counter attack ah. at this point, he wins. Yeah, Silent Shadow has a massive win of opportunity. Although it looks like not as massive as we thought. Is he doing Sprung so? just has some stuff here. Sprung has some units, but Silent Shadow can break them. Also, attack moving his uh, Scorchers instead of uh, just regular move. Yeah. Which works better with Scorchers. But it doesn't matter. Silent Shadow, they're getting the advantage in Scorchers. Sprung is far less well-equipped to attack. The South Side also being taken out by Silent Shadow. Their commander just walking through, taking out the metal extractors, taking those spots for themselves. And at the same time, he's doing uh, there's the, the counter counterattack. Attack. There is the attempted death blow from Silent Shadow along the center of the map. But does he uh, build any riots, more turrets in his own base? He doesn't. No, this is very vulnerable. This is a base trade situation. Although, a leveler could... Oh, a leveler's not coming in. More Scorchers, but this is uh, entirely he, a micro game. He's blocked. He doesn't notice. I don't think Silent Shadow has the micro game to make this work. So another the multitasking game. And yeah, as we can see, the factory's blocked. That really doesn't support that. Well, the two Lotuses, and as long as those Scorchers keep shooting random solar collectors, it's okay. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's... That actually there goes the factory, well. yeah, but that's strong. not the end of the game. Ugh. It isn't, although a lot of Scorchers are still alive from that factory destruction, and Silent Shadow defends against that. Sprung realizes there's nothing to be done, and throws the ah, towel. He, he wasn't but dead was, yet. Yeah, I know. It wasn't dead. It was There was room for another factory. There was enough excess metal that they could have built a factory with, you know, 40 spending or something like that. It would have taken maybe 15 seconds. That would have worked out fine. I mean, they could have rebuilt the factory. They could have rebuilt the units. But they figured they'd go on to game... Oh, yeah, that's game... Yeah, why did Sprung drop that? That was game two. Like, that. that's... That's the set. Silent Shadow just won 2-0. Like Sprung could have kept that. I don't think Sprung realized that they were actually at the end of the set there. So anyway, that is game and match. We are on to the semifinals now, I think. Let's see, we have exactly that. Yeah, Lauri and Orphelius for semifinals and Silent Shadow and Clone afterwards for the second semifinals. That yeah, let's jump to uh, ISP Lauri then. Yeah, Lauri is definitely the one to go for first because, well, they're on the top. That's totally arbitrary. I let the other player. I let uh, Silent Shadow have a moment to, uh, to collect there for his next match. Let them have a chance to run around the room, whooping and cheering and hollering. Okay, they're probably not at that point yet. If they beat Clone, they'll be at that point. 